Oh, come on, continue to give the Lord a round of applause. Come on. Thank you, George. Thank you, Orchestra, for the talents that God has given you to do that. I am honored to be here with y'all this morning or this evening. I'm sorry. I'm always ready to be here Sunday morning, but it's Saturday night. It is Easter weekend, people. Come on. Give the Lord a round of applause. I've got some friends, some couples, some incredible stories to share with y'all today, so I'm excited to introduce these people to you. Alan's going to help us, but thank you again for allowing us to be here on this Easter Saturday night. Thank you, Ryan. Welcome, everyone, to this Easter service. He is risen. Tonight, we have nine people coming for baptism, and this one is Andy Morton. Y'all make Andy feel welcome, please. Come on, Andy. I got you. There you go. We're going to come right around here, okay? And you're going to put your feet right under that bar, but stand up so all this family that came here to see you can see you and smile. So I've been told by the family that the grandmother brought some actual water from the Jordan River, all right? So if y'all are cool with it, I'm going to add it to this baptistry booth right now, okay? All right? On behalf of Andy's family, right? All right. I'll put it right here so I make sure. Nope, back here because you got to get baptized in it, right? All right, I'm going to give this back to mom over here. But family, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for sharing this with us. Andy and I, we got to meet and talk with the family she made her decision at home, so thank you, parents. Thank you, families, for being disciple makers. Honored to walk through with this through y'all when a child makes a decision, okay? So, Andy, are you ready? Are you excited? All right, girl, well, you can have a seat, okay? Let's go back a little bit more. There you go. Perfect. All right. Andy, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you promised to follow him all the days of your life? That's awesome. Then by your profession of faith, I baptize you on my friend, but my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can cross your arms. Oh, you're going to baptize yourself. Let me stand back. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I got you, all right? Bear with Christ in baptism. Raised to walk in newness and life. Good job, girl. Mm. Fantastic. Coming now, we have a mom and son being baptized. This is Luz McIntosh and her son, Thomas. Come make on, them Thomas. feel welcome yes, tonight. Yes, make them feel welcome. And you'll just stand right here, Miss Luz. Come right around here, Thomas. So I was talking to mom and son back there in the back and asked who wants to go first, and Thomas said, I'm going first, all right? He was excited to get up here. Hey, love the Mac Macintosh family. Thank you for all they do, not only for this church. They help teach one of our K-5 classes. Been doing it for quite a few years, but they're also helping upward a lot. So thank you so much. Look forward to having John Ellis with us in a couple years, but excited for Tommy, excited for Ben and this entire family. But uh, Tommy, thank you for going before your mother and before your family and for this entire church. To tell them that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and ready to follow him all the days of your life. So, Tommy, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. That's awesome, buddy. Then by your profession of faith, I baptize you on my friend by my brother in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you can plug it now. There you go. <laughs> Bury Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness in life. And look, you stand right here and you get to watch Mom, okay? Come right here, Miss Luce. <laughs> Come on down. So thank you again for not only how you stand before your family and for your profession of faith, but also the feelings that you have right now. Yes, to walk with your son and with your family forever in the name of Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen? Yes, That's right. We're excited about your decision. We as a church, we're praying for you and we support you. And thank you for the difference that you make in those K-5 classes and also at Upper Park every day because you're a good baseball coach. Look forward to it. All right. <laughs> Well, Luz, if you accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, yes, sir. and you promised to follow him all the days of your life, yes, sir. that's awesome. Then by your profession of faith, I baptize you on my friend, but my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness in life. Congratulations. Thank you. You're and coming now is Tristan Dyer. Y'all make Tristan feel welcome, please. Come on, Tristan. Here, come sit right here, brother. Feet right under that bar right there. Awesome. Tristan and I were talking, catching up, and he's just excited of what God has called him to do. He is ready to follow him wholeheartedly with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. And God has called him to certain areas, and he's ready to follow through in baptism and allow the Lord and the Holy Spirit to guide him all the days of his life. So I appreciate you sharing that with me. appreciate you standing before this church because there's somewhere here in this congregation right now who is in the same place that you were at. And they're trying to decide, am I ready to follow them fully? And you're a witness to them right now. So thank you for your witness. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you for your story, brother. 
Are you ready to get baptized? Yes, That's awesome, man. Well, listen, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, yes, ready to follow him all the days of your life. Yes, That's awesome, brother. Then by a profession of faith, I'm baptizing all my friend but my brother in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Cross your arms. There you go. Bear with Christ in baptism. Raised to walk in newness in life. Congratulations, brother. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And coming now as a husband and wife, this is Josh and Autumn Duncan. They've been married, oh, about a month. That's right. Make them feel welcome. Come on, Josh. You're going to come down here, and you'll just stand right there, okay? Yeah, right there, Josh. You'll have a seat. Feet right under that bar. Now, I'm a children's pastor. Sometimes when I have the kids come out, we do a, we do a silly picture. So look right at that camera right there, and let's do give a big smile. There you go. Hey, I appreciate getting to know y'all. And, and like uh, Alan just said, they just got married March 1st. And they made a decision that, as, yeah, come on. <clears throat> that as newlyweds, they want to make their foundation in Christ and in him alone. So they are coming before this church to say, we are not just a married couple, a husband and wife, but we are a ministry. And we're going to follow him all the days of your life. So that's awesome. So thank you so much for your witness. So husband. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I have. And promised him to follow him all the days of your life? I do. That's awesome, brother. Then by your profession of faith, I'm baptizing all my friend but my brother in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you want to plug your nose, but you don't have to, you good? All right. <laughs> Bury Christ in baptism. Raise to walk in newness in life. And you're just stand right over here, Josh, okay? You come on up. And you just cheer on, brother. Well, like I said, we are honored to do this with y'all to hear your testimony and hear your story. And we are praying for you guys, not only for your marriage, but also your ministry as you continue to trust in Jesus Christ to be the foundation of your lives. Amen, church. Amen. Listen, have you accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Promise to follow him all the days of your life. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Then by your profession of faith, I baptize you on my friend, but my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury Christ in baptism. Raised to walk in newness in life. Congratulations, man. And so now we have another young married couple. This is Ricky and Brianna Marsh. They've been married almost one year. <laughs> Make them feel welcome. Come on down, brother. Just hang out right there, okay? <laughs> all right, all right. We got a fan club, all right? But no, these, this is an incredible couple, young couples involved in our choir and also does a lot for our preschool ministry. So we have seen the family grow up in this church, so it's an awesome to stand here. Not only see a couple that just got married, but also see a couple who's been together for a year now and continue to fall through. Because like you said, he was telling me in the back, he's already been saved, but kind of never fully got baptized. So he's ready to kind of finish his decision and continue to follow him all the days of your life. So thank you for the example you're being for the husband that you're being for this family. So congratulations, brother. Have you accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Promise to follow him all the days of your life? Yes, sir. That's awesome. Then by your profession of faith, I baptize you on my friend, but my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bear your Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness in life, and you'll come stand right over here, okay? Come on, man. So like I said, I've, I've had these kids for a, a long time, right? <laughs> Grew up in this church, so honored to not only know as the involvement in children's ministry, but to stand here and be able to baptize you. Not by me, it's obviously the Lord's work that he's done in your lives for both of y'all, so congratulations to y'all. To y'all's almost one year anniversary, this is an awesome way to celebrate it, but as a church, we're excited to see y'all continue to follow him as your Lord and your Savior. So have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord? Yes, sir. That's awesome. Then by your profession of faith, I baptize not my friend, but my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness in life. Congratulations. And coming now is someone, well, Ryan, I think you know this person. I'm going to let you tell everybody who she is. Well, this is my daughter. This is my oldest. Don't say awe. <laughs> Just stand up right here, feet under the bar, see the family there, everybody's here. No, stand up, you got to smile, all right. Yep, there's your brother, there's everybody. All right, look at the camera, all right, show them your muscles, all right. All right, whatever, all right. But no, I'm, I'm truly honored. I, I don't deserve to stand here, um, but I'm honored to uh, not only baptize each and every person uh, in this church today, but also to be able to uh, baptize my, uh, my oldest uh, child, my, my daughter. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah.
their tears of joy. I know just like the Macintoshes and the, and the Mortons, you know, you stand there and see your child get baptized. There's no greater joy than that in the entire world. And uh, it's nothing that me and Eric did. It's, it's all the Lord's work. So thank you, Pastor Kevin, Brother Mark, for your leadership. She made a decision after VBS. And we said, you ain't getting baptized until we know you're ready. And so she's been asking us for months. So this is the Lord's timing, and we're excited to be, see you get baptized. Okay, baby? All right. You can have a seat, okay? All right, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? you got to say, yes, sir. <laughs> Everybody said, yes, sir, but his own daughter. <laughs> you promised to follow him all the days of your life. That's awesome. Then by your profession of faith, I know, she shook her head again, I know. <laughs> then by your profession of faith, I baptize you not only my friend, but my daughter, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury Christ in baptism. Raised to walk in newness in life. Come on, girl. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Well, amen. I can't think of a better way to begin Easter weekend. Can I get an amen from the church? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome. We're so glad you're with us. Orchestra, phenomenal celebration choir. We look forward to hearing you. What a beautiful way to begin Easter weekend as we celebrate the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we see those baptisms, a statement of what Jesus has already done in their life. The water doesn't wash their sins away. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can do that. But it is a public statement on the outside of what God, through Jesus Christ, has already done on the inside. So we're excited. We have baptisms in both services in the morning at 9 and 11 o'clock, so to God be the glory. Hey, let me just give you a very brief welcome. We want to run right in, jump right into worship. There's a little connect card if you're a guest with us. If, if GFBC is not your church home, and if you're a guest with us, you'll see a little card that looks like that. It's kind of in, in front of the seats there in front of you. If you would, grab one of those if you can during the service. You get bored during the sermon and fill that out. I'll think you're taking sermon notes. But anyway, just jot your information down there if you would, and then check the boxes that might. Uh, uh, you know, apply to you. And then we have these new, new here stations out in the lobby area. And if you'll take those, drop that card there at the new, at the new here station, and we have a gift box for you. And so pick that gift box up. You'll see several things that are inside. It's just our way of saying thank you for being here. Thank you for being a guest. We'd love to get the connect card from you, and we'd love to give the gift box to you. So welcome. We're glad you're with us, guest. And I encourage, hey, our folks, let's, let's welcome everybody here tonight. Could we do that? Amen. To God be the glory. I might just mention, if you'd like to give this weekend, a simple way to do that. We don't pass the offering plates, but you can give online. You'll see all the information there. It's very simple. You can give mobile. Text GFBCAL to 77977, or we have an app. Just look up Gardendale First Baptist. You can certainly give on the app. Or we have secure giving stations here on campus where you can give with an offering envelope if you'd like to do that. Or, of course, you can always mail your gift to the church if you'd like to give. We'd appreciate that. We have a Sunday morning, Wednesday evening worship schedule. Wednesday evening is at 630. We have a 60-minute worship service called Oasis right here, 630 to 730. While we're doing that, all the kids birth through fifth grade. They're all in kids praise uh, here on, at the North Campus. And then while we're here, our students, uh, sixth through twelfth grade, they're at the South Campus and have their own incredible evening of worship. All that happens, 6.30, Wednesday evenings. Uh, we'd love for you to jump in there and be a part of that right in the middle of the week. Kind of bridges the gap from Sunday to Sunday. Last thing I want to mention is that one week from tonight is what we call our Red Back Singing. It's, uh, if you like old-fashioned songs, it's going to be a great evening. It's at 5 o'clock right here uh, next Saturday. So let me, let me pray for us right now. Lord Jesus, it's so good to be in your house with your people. And man, we have come to hear from heaven today. I want to thank you that we do not serve a dead Savior. He is alive. And he's alive in this place. And we have come to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. We give you all the praise because you alone are worthy. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray this tonight. And everyone said... Hey Amen. When those new believers, new Christians in that day and age would meet one another on the sidewalk, one would say, Christ is risen, and the other would say back, Christ is risen indeed. So I think that's a great way for us to jump into worship tonight. I'm going to say, Christ is risen, and you shout back, Christ is risen indeed. Ready? Here, let me go first. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. One more time. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And could we welcome him in the house tonight? Amen.
This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Say 
I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but of those whom you have given me, for they are yours. I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth.
do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word. O righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have made your name known to them, and will make it known, so that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them.
Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. See 
The Spirit and the Bride say come, and let the one who hears say come, and let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.
just a sign he's getting closer he's already on the road oh, come on we sing yeah the story has been written Can I get an amen from the church? Amen. Incredible worship to God be the glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And He is coming back. You know, whether you believe that Jesus is coming back or not doesn't change the facts. Doesn't change the truth. I don't want to frighten you tonight, but I'm going to tell you Jesus is coming back. Might be tonight, might be tomorrow, might be next week, but I'm telling you, He is going to return. Amen, church? It's going to return. The series is called Victory. We began with the blood, and last week we talked about the cross, and today's message is the tomb. The tomb. I want to announce to you tonight that the tomb Jesus borrowed is empty. What comes to your mind when I mention the word Easter? What do you think about? Here in the Bible Belt, we have a lot of activities, a lot of festivities, a lot of get-togethers, a lot of parties, a lot of fellowships, a lot of things happen, Easter egg hunts and chocolate bunnies and baskets of candy and on and on the list goes. But I want to tell you, Easter is much more than that. Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Make no mistake about it. 
It's not just about chocolate bunnies and candy and no get-togethers. All those things are wonderful. All those things are good. They're not evil. But I'm telling you, Easter is about a resurrected Savior. I've been sitting here on this night, Easter weekend, to just announce to you that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. I was saved when I was eight years old. I surrendered to the ministry when I was 11. When God called me to the ministry as an 11-year-old, people even nowadays will ask me, did, did you know what you were doing at 11 years old? And my answer always is no, and I still don't. I'm still figuring that out. But I know one thing. I wanted to, I wanted to minister, preach in a place where Jesus is alive, where the music's alive. I tell all the folks all the time, everything you do ought to be alive. Our worship ought to be alive. That's why we have a little pep in our step. Uh, our fellowship our, our, ought to be alive. Our preaching ought to be alive. Our teaching ought to be alive. I, I tell folks, if you've got coffee in the lobby, it ought to be bubbling up. Jesus is alive. Je you got, you got jelly-filled donuts, ought to be spewing out blueberry. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Je I'm telling you, Jesus isn't dead. He is alive. And he's not just alive in heaven. He's alive in this place. But I'm going to say to you tonight, he wants to be alive in your life. So a simple question, a simple message how does the empty tomb impact you? How does the empty tomb impact? I mean, really, what difference does the empty tomb mean in your life, in your home, in your marriage, at your job, school next week? I mean, what is it? The fact that his tomb is empty, wonderful, I'm glad, but how does it impact your life? What, what kind of lessons do we learn? What does it teach us? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if you brought your word, please turn there. In the New Testament, middle way back, 1 Corinthians Chapter number 15. Every book has numbers of chapters. Every chapter is number of verses. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. How does the empty tomb impact you? Number one, what lesson do we learn? Jesus died for your sins. Jesus died for your sins. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 and following. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you. I want you to remember I want you to recall the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your very stand. By this gospel, you are saved. I want to say tonight, you're not saved by your religion. I tell folks all the time, I, with my family and I moved here in 06, 18 years ago. It's incredible, amazing to believe that. Our youngest was three years old at the time. She's now 57. No, I'm just teasing. She's... I don't know what age it is, 21 now, 18 years ago. And I tell folks, what, Bourbon, this, Alabama's a wonderful place to live, incredible place to raise a family, beautiful. You're kind of in the buckle of the Bible Belt. But I want to tell you, it's a dangerous place because sometimes you rely on your family traditions, you rely on your church traditions, you rely on your, what I might call your Bible Belt religion. And I'm going to tell you, religion will not get you to heaven. Religion will frustrates you. Religion makes you difficult to get along with. Anybody married to somebody you wish you weren't? No, I'm not going to ask it that way. I just... Anybody know somebody that's difficult to get along with? Yeah, that's what religion does to you. See, you see, your good works will never get you to heaven. Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, of good things which we have done, but according to his mercy he has saved us. I know a lot of religious people. Jesus said it this way. He said in the last days, many will say to me, let that sink in a moment. Many will say to me in those last days, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I cast out demons? Didn't I perform miracles? These aren't just nominal believers, Christians, who show up at church once in a blue moon when there's nothing else to do. We are talking about folks who just show up at Easter because that's what you do in the Bible Belt. I mean, these are folks who cast out demons, perform miracles. And Jesus will say, I think the saddest words in the whole Bible, depart from me, I never, I never knew you. And you may be saying tonight, but I'm in church on a Saturday night, doesn't that count for something? The Bible says the demons believe and tremble. I'm glad you're here. 
I'm thankful you're here. To God be the glory. But you can't rely on your works to get you to heaven. You can't rely on walking an aisle or being baptized in a baptistry. You cannot rely on on filling out a commitment card. You can't rely on singing in a choir or playing an instrument. You you can't rely on church attendance. I'm a member of the church, but are you a member of the family of God? Have your sins been washed away? Have you met Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you repented of your sins? Do you know Jesus? Are you following him with all you've got? Paul said again, verse 2, look at it. He said, the Bible says, by this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures now if you're a baptocostal you can give a shout right there come on now hallelujah christ died for my sins according to the scriptures what an incredible thought what an incredible truth that jesus died for our sins my sins and your sins and here's the message of the gospel jesus died for you He allowed them to place the crown of thorns on his head for you. He allowed the spear shoved in his side for you. He allowed the nails in his hands and his feet for you. They they mocked him for you. They scorned him for you. Uh, He gasped for air for you. He said, it is finished for you. And they placed him in a borrowed tomb for you. And he was resurrected three days later for you. And he's alive for you. And hear me tonight. If you know him, he's coming back for you. Jesus died for you. There's no greater way to communicate God's love for you than through the death of his only son, Jesus Christ. There's no one. I want you to hear me tonight. There's no one who loves you like God loves you. I've said it a thousand times. If you let me stay here, I'll say it a thousand more. God knows you best, and he loves you most. John chapter 15, verse 13. The word says, greater love has no man than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Hey, Jesus died for you. He died for your sins. Romans chapter 5. You see, at just the right time. Would somebody in the house say, at just the right time? Come on. At just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, well, someone might possibly dare to die. Verse 8, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this while You, me, us, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified, not by your good works, not by my religion, but by the precious blood of Jesus, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I don't want to burst your bubble, but everybody here has sinned. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. Everybody here is messed up. Every, everybody here has got issues. If you don't believe that, vacation with them. <laughs> Spend a week with them. I guarantee you'll come back saying, those folks are messed up. Yeah, it's just reality. But thank God we have a Savior. Jesus, who came and died for messed up folk like me and you. Amen. To God be the glory. I tell folks, if you got it all together, you don't have any issues. You don't have any problems in your life at all. You don't have any skeletons in the closet. Nothing. Don't join our church. We'll mess you up. We got some messed up folk, but thank God we have a Savior who loves us too much to leave us the way he found us. C.J. Mahoney says this. The personal desolation Christ experiencing on the cross is what you and I should be experiencing. But instead, Jesus is burying it and burying it alone. Why alone? He's alone so that we might never be alone. Jesus died for your sins. Number two, Jesus rose from the grave for you. The empty tomb, what does it mean to me? It means Jesus died for my sins. It means Jesus, he arose from the grave for me, for you, for us. 
in our text, 1 Corinthians 15, look at verse 4. Watch this and following. And that Jesus was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. There's a good place for a shout right there. Come on. Amen. And that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep, already died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, gives us a new lease on life. Think about in a moment that, that, that there, there was not a more discouraging or depressing time in the life of Jesus' closest followers, his disciples, right after his death on the cross, all of their hopes and their dreams had literally been destroyed. They, they assumed that Jesus would always be with them. They thought he would establish this earthly kingdom and set them free from this Roman oppression. And so when he died on the cross, it rocked their world. They thought, oh goodness, how could this happen? In fact, they realized that if they killed Jesus, guess who would be next? His closest followers, us, they thought. And so that's why they ran to the upper room and were hiding in agonizing fear. Have you been there? I have. You ever been terribly discouraged? You ever been extremely depressed? You ever been, you ever been paralyzed by fear? You ever felt like life was caving in on you? You ever lost your job unexpectedly? You ever found yourself going through a divorce? Never dreaming you'd be there? You ever found yourself maybe battling cancer or some other disease? You thought, well, not me. It'll be somebody else. You ever buried a loved one? You ever been overwhelmed with loneliness? Life can be incredibly difficult, but when you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to navigate it by yourself. You have a Savior, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. John chapter 20 says it this way, And on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, in other words, that they would be next, Jesus shows up, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands inside. And watch this last sentence. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. That, that's a nice way of saying they had them a Baptocosta party in that upper room. I'm telling you, they were overjoyed when they saw Jesus. Some of you are facing the storms of life without the one who created your life. Listen, when you know Jesus, you can have joy even in the midst of your storms. I lost my job, but my God is with me. I'm facing divorce, but my God is with me. I'm battling illness, but my God is with me. I feel overwhelmed, but my God is with me. God will never leave you or forsake you even in death. My God is with me. My last breath on earth as a believer in Christ is followed by my first breath in heaven. I'm telling you, for the believer, it's not goodbye, it's see you later. Hallelujah. Overjoyed. I'm overjoyed in Jesus. When you know Jesus, there is joy even in the midst of your storms and your heartaches. Why? Because Jesus rose from the grave for you. And for me. And lastly, I would say, Jesus conquered death for you. <laughs> what does the empty tomb mean? It means Jesus conquered death for you, for me. Here's our text, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep. We will all be changed. In a flash... In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come to true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. <laughs> Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Would someone in the house say, thanks be to God? 
Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Listen, the message of Easter, the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is that when we repent of our sins, turn from our sinful lifestyle to Jesus and begin following him with all we've got for as long as we've got, we don't have to fear death. And through Jesus Christ, we have victory over the grave. Listen, when I die, if the Lord returns, if he does not return before I die, they'll put my body in a casket and they'll drop that casket down in the ground somewhere. But my soul will immediately be in the very presence of God. And one day he'll resurrect my body. And my resurrected body will be reunited with my soul. And it'll be a brand new body, a perfect body. People ask me, well, what's it going to be like? What, what are we going to do in heaven? I, tell, I don't have all the answers about heaven. I know we'll be watching reruns of Andy Griffith. And there'll be a dollar general on every cloud. I just I know that's the truth. I guarantee you that. I'm telling you, one day that body's going to come up out of the ground, reunited with my soul, but it's going to be a, a, a new body. It'll never grow old, and it'll never wear out. Any of you got a body that's growing old and wearing out? And if you don't get, some of you are 30 years old, Ray, put your hand down. <laughs> you just wait. You think it's rough now. Had a tough time getting up today, 32 years old. Really? Yeah. You just wait. Give it another 30 or 40 years. You won't get out of the bed. You'll fall out of the bed. And then you can't get up. Help me, help me, I'm falling. Right? How many of you hurt in places you didn't even know you had? Come on. Sure. I tell, I tell my daughters all the time. They'll, they'll, they'll be in the service tomorrow. I tell them all the time. When you see an older person, by the way, the older I get, the older that gets. You know what I'm talking about. But when you see an older person, I tell them, you respect that person because they've been through some stuff. <laughs> They're warriors. I guarantee you that. They have been through some stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, I used to drive a car, and I could drive for hours. didn't bother me at all. And I'd jump out of that car, get a little gas, jump in a little minute mark, grab me a Coca-Cola and a Snickers bar, and I'd come bouncing back to the car. Boy, now I drive about 90 minutes. <laughs> and i got to stop. And it ain't for gas. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> and I don't go bouncing into that minute mark. I go in there dragging one leg. I get out slowly, let the blood move, you know. <laughs> my daughter said, what's wrong with you? I said, well, I ain't got no blood in my leg. Just hold on a second. I'm walking in like that, you know. I, I, listen, when you, when you know Jesus, they're going to stick your old body in the ground. But I'm telling you, that, that's not me. You're not leaving me in the ground. Who I am, I'm with the Father. To be absent the body, to be present with the Lord. <laughs> and one day... I'm going to have a brand new body with that soul. And I'm telling you, the Bible says we're going to live forever and forever. I can assure you one thing about heaven. There'll be no funeral homes in heaven. There'll be no cemeteries in heaven. There's no death. I want to close tonight. I brought a few pictures with me. My mother and dad, how many of you have a loved one already in glory? Yeah, me too. My mother, my father's there. This is my mom and my dad. It's Jerry and Gwen Ham. Um, the next picture, this is my mother. And that cute, <laughs> let me get that handsome, oh, look at that smile on that little baby. That's me. <laughs> it's my older brother right there beside me. The next picture's a little more sobering. It's my dad's tombstone in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Go back to my dad's, would you, for a moment? August 5th, 1936. There's a time to be born. And then there's a time to go home. September 2nd, 2012. Now that was a Sunday. So how do you know? I remember when my brother called me that morning and said, Dad just took his last breath on earth. I said, well, I'm going to church. I'll preach. 
and then I'll be there. The next picture is my mother's tombstone. Just a small place there in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Gwen, she had remarried Howard. What you can't see to the right is her homegoing date. December 18th, 1999. December 18th, 1999. So how do you know? Exactly one week before Christmas. December 18th, 1999. I'll never forget when we all gathered. Seven days after my mother had gone home and we gathered for that Christmas. That was a, that was a tough Christmas. Some of you have been there. be 25 years this Christmas. She never met our youngest daughter, Kayla. But she's going to meet her. Amen. Said, so why do you show us those pictures? I'm closing, so stay with me. Because I don't want to frighten you. I'm not trying to manipulate your emotions. But I want to be honest with you. You're not getting out of this place alive. I'm not talking about the service tonight. We will let you out. And <laughs> Is he passing out Kool-Aid? I'm not drinking. <laughs> that was not in my notes. Anyway. You understand what I'm saying. We're all going to die. I mean, barring Jesus' return, and even then, you're going to die. You're going to take your last breath this, that breath this out of heaven. You, you're not going to live forever here. So my question is, are you prepared for that moment? We make preparations for everything in life, except for the one thing we know is going to happen and that's death. Jesus says it this way. Last scripture I'll give you. John chapter 11. He says, I am the resurrection of life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. 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 And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Have you ever repented of your sin and made Jesus Christ your Lord? And are you following him right now with all you've got for as long as you've got? I, I, hear me. I'm not asking, have you walked an aisle? I'm not asking, have you been baptized? I'm not asking, have you prayed at the altar? I'm not asking, have you ever attended vacation Bible school? You ever filled out a commitment card? You, you ever sang in the choir? I'm not asking any of that. I'm asking you. Do you know that you know that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, but I, I don't know if you can know that. Oh, 1, Corinthians, 1 John 5, 13 says, These things I've written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. And that life is found in Jesus Christ. Do you know that? Are you certain if you, tragic, if you died tonight, do you know? Do you know you'd go to heaven? And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Have you ever made that commitment? I want to give you an opportunity as I close tonight to make the greatest decision you've ever made in your life. That is to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. I'm going to invite you to come. And I want to ask you if you would give me the honor, the privilege of meeting you right down here. In just a moment, I'm going to pray. And after I pray... If that's you tonight, you're ready to give your life to Jesus. You're ready to know that if you died, you'd go to heaven. I, I'm going to invite you. What, what, better, what better time to do it than Easter weekend? I'm going to invite you to get up from where you're at in just a moment and meet me. I'm going to meet you right down here. Meet me right down here in just a moment. You say, well, th there's so many people here. I'll do it another day, another time. No, the Bible says today's the day of salvation. This is the moment. You don't have a guarantee you'll even see tomorrow morning. Neither do I. Somebody else may be preaching the message in the morning. I don't know. Are you ready? You say, well, if I come down there, what's going to happen? I I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to lead you in what we call a prayer of commitment right down here.
And we'll all say it together. You're not going to be praying by yourself. You're going to be nervous about that. We'll all say it together. As you commit your heart and your life, turn from your sin and invite Jesus into your life right here, right down here. And let me tell you what's going to happen. When you get up from wherever you're at, on this main floor, on the tiered city, when you get up, you say, well, there's so many folks here. I'm nervous. I I understand that. But I'm telling you, when you step out, here's what's going to happen. Our folks are going to begin to applaud. Because they know it's the greatest decision you've ever made in your life. They could not be more excited for you. And at some point, they made the exact same decision, the very same decision. So they're going to be celebrating with you, encouraging you as you make your way down here. You can come by yourself and meet me right here. If you're sitting with a friend, you can say, hey, would you go with me? And, and they'll come right down here. And both of you can meet me right down here. You're leaning beside, sitting beside somebody. Say, hey, you might want to lean over and say, if you'd like to go, I, I, I'd, I'll go with you. Or maybe you're a, a young person. You could lean over to mom or dad and say, hey, can I go? Would you go with me? Mom, dad, you, you come down here with them. It's the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. And would you give me the honor? and the privilege to meet you right here at this altar. Tonight, Easter weekend, to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. I want to pray. And then I'm going to say amen. And when I say amen, I'm going to invite you to do something very bold, to get up where you're at and meet me right down here. You say, well... Why, why do I have to do it? Well, listen, Jesus went to the cross publicly. The Bible knows nothing of these secret disciples. No, no. In fact, Jesus said, if you do not confess me before men, I will not confess you before my Father who's in heaven. There's something about saying I'm not ashamed to follow my Savior. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Are you ready? I don't know who it may be. There may be none come, maybe one, maybe 21. I don't know, but we're going to wait just a moment. And if right now your your heart's beating, your palms are sweaty, you say, how did you know that? I've been there. I know. If that's what we call the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and he's whispering, he's talking to you. He's whispering, I'm talking. This is your moment, sir. This is your moment, ma'am. This is your opportunity, young person. You may say, well, well, I'm a church member. I'm not asking that. I'm asking, I can't tell you the number of church members who've generally got saved. Can I get an amen? amen? I was in a revival preaching when the pastor who had invited me to the meeting, he got saved in the service. And he was the pastor of the church. And I've told you, they come to me and said, what are we going to do now? He's been here seven years. He just got saved. I said, give him a raise. He's going to preach a whole lot better now. Listen to me. The enemy will give you a thousand and one excuses tonight. He'll say, do it another time. There's too many people here. You're going out to dinner. Listen, you go down there, they'll keep you till Thursday. That's not true. That's, That's the enemy. He's a liar. In just a matter of moments, you'll give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, the greatest decision you'll ever make. We have a little booklet we're going to put in your hands, and you'll be gone. If you've got folks here, they'll wait on you. They couldn't be more excited for your decision. I'm just going to pray for boldness now. And I'm going to ask you if you would. You're ready to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. You're ready to nail that down once and for all. Tonight, Easter weekend. I'm going to ask you to meet me right down there. They're just going to play a little bit of music. Lord, I pray right now for a holy boldness and a courage to respond to the Holy Spirit tonight. In the name of Of Jesus Christ, I pray this. Are you ready? Amen. So I'm going to invite you right now. Would you come? We'll wait just a moment. Come on. Come by yourself. Come with a friend. Come on. Meet me right down here. Yeah. God bless you. Come on. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, just remain standing right here. Yeah, just remain standing. Come on. Others are come. We're going to wait a moment. We're going to wait a moment. Just come and stand right down here. God bless you. Come on. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Yeah, come on.
Come on. Just come and stand. God bless you, brother. Come on. That's right. Come on. This is your moment. Just come and stand right down here, would you? We're going to wait a moment. Let, please, give me the opportunity, the privilege to lead you to Jesus tonight. Come on. Amen. Come on. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Yeah. That's awesome. Hallelujah. That's so cool. Come on in here. Yeah, just stand right down here. Come on. We're going to wait a moment. This is the greatest decision you ever make. This is what the church is all about. We'll wait for you. Come on. You're, you're up top up there. We'll wait on you on this bottom floor. Find the nearest aisle. Anybody else anywhere? Come on. Ready to give your life to Christ. I know what it's like. You're saying, boy, I, I, I want to go. I should Just step out. My pastor would always say it this way. You take the first step, and he'll go with you the rest of the way. Come on. Anybody else? Anybody? Anywhere? Come by yourself or come with a friend. Meet me right down here. I don't want to close it if anybody's ready to come. Come on. Anybody else anywhere? Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Praise God. God bless you guys. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on around here, would you? Yeah, come right on here. That's beautiful. Come on around then. Yeah, stand right over there. Thank you so much. That's so awesome. Anybody else anywhere? The old preachers used to say, is every heart clear? Every heart clear? You done what the Lord has asked you to do? That's all I ask. I'm not trying to manipulate you. I'm just preaching the gospel and asking you to respond to what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. Is there anybody else anywhere? We'll wait one more moment. Now, just a, a holy moment. Would you just, you guys, would you all just be seated? I want to talk to them. Moment, you're going to hear me. This won't take long at all. This is such a beautiful moment. I'm so excited you're here tonight. By the way, if anybody else wants to join, just come on down here with us. Come on, quickly. I'm so proud of you and excited for you. It's the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. And the Bible says, for all of sin and fall short of God's glory. God is holy and righteous. And because God is holy and righteous and we're not, that sin, the things that we do wrong, right, that disobedience, that, that sin separates us from a holy God. And the only way for that sin to be paid for is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for the wages, Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. That means the result, the payment for sin is death. And not just physical death, but spiritual death, separation from God. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ is Lord. And the verse I gave you, God committed. He showed, he proved his love toward us, all of us, that while we were sinners, Jesus died for us. And then Romans 10, 9 says that if you shall confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God has raised him to the dead, you will be saved. Yeah. Come on, God bless you. Come on in here. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you for being here. God bless you guys. Welcome. We're glad you're with us. And then the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's just a moment where we, we turn from our sin. We, what we're doing isn't working. God, I can't do it on my own. And I trust that Jesus shed his blood for me. And you give your life to Christ. And then you begin to follow him all the days of your life. It's the greatest decision. I'm so excited for you. If you allow me, I want to lead you in this prayer, what we call a prayer of commitment, all right? And, and you just can say it out loud after me. In fact, just to encourage you, I'd like all of us to say it. For you that have already made that commitment, it'll just kind of reaffirm, just allow you to celebrate your decision, but it'll help these down here. So I want us to pray this together, okay? You ready? Pray this prayer with me. Just say this after me. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord Jesus, dear Holy Spirit, right here, right now, I turn from my sin. I repent of my sin. And I receive you into my life. Thank you for dying for me. Help me to live for you. I declare with my mouth and with my life 
Jesus is Lord and Jesus is my Savior. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Would you celebrate with them tonight? Would you do that? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, very simple. Brother Mark's right here, and we have a little booklet we want to give you and just answer any questions you might have. It's very simple. It won't take but two minutes or so. If you'll just follow him right out that way. We have a little room set up. He'll put a little booklet in your hand. If you've got family here, they'll wait for you. It won't take two or three minutes. And we'll answer any question you might have. Give you that little booklet and you'll be on your way. So if you'll just follow them right over. While they're going, would you celebrate with them tonight again? Would you do that? God bless you guys, man. That's awesome. Hallelujah, man. To God be the glory. Amen. (laughs) I'm going to tell you something, church. That never gets old. I'm so glad he's still in the saving business. What he's done, what he's done. Thank God for what he has done. And I want to tell you tonight, if you needed to make that decision but didn't, we're going to sing a great response song. You can still come. Come to one of us. We'll be right down here to my right, your left. We'll be hanging out right down here. You come to one of them and tell them, hey, man, I'm ready. I need to give my life to you. Or what better week to join GFBC if God's leading you than right now? Come. We'd love to invite you to come. And say, We'd like to join. How do, we, how do we become members? We have a new member pack we'll put in there. Or you saw baptisms. We're going to have baptism morning at 9 and 11. If you want... And you're ready. You've committed your life to Christ. We'll baptize you in the morning. Come and let us know. Or we'll schedule it for you next month. If you want to, whatever. I'm just telling you, there's freedom in the house. Would you stand and let's put our hands together and let's worship. Come on as they sing for us today. Amen. Yeah. Our leaders are right here. Come on as they sing for us. You're going to love this song. Anybody else thankful Jesus is still alive? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh, look at these words. You're going to love this. To God be the glory. See on the hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. Look at the wounds that gave me life. Grace flowing from his side. No greater, no sacrifice. greater sacrifice. What he's done. What he's done. What he's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God.
Come on, give him praise in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, amen and amen. I want to tell you, our leaders, we'll go hang out here for a little while. If you want to make a decision, wish you had but didn't, come on, we'll meet you right down here. We'd love to help you make the decision. Pray for the two services in the morning. We'll have a 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. We're going to let y'all out alive tonight. <laughs> but we're still deciding about tomorrow. We'll let you know. Thank God he's alive. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Tell somebody about Jesus. Pray for the services tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you. If you don't have a church home, God bless you. We'll hang out right here. God bless you. Thank you for being here. <laughs>